Are you ready for just the most random assortment of Warhammery, Warhammering, the ever Warhammered? Sometimes stuff just comes to you in a weird way, and now I gotta figure out what to do with these things and when I will get to them, but hey, let's talk about it. Hey friends, it's me, the Ebony Otaku, the well-rounded nerd. Y'all see my other ring light back there? Hey. So yes, I'm wearing the exact same outfit for two Warhammer Wednesday videos in a row because scheduling. So this is kind of great. So I have the most random assortment of Warhammery that has come to me in the past couple of weeks. And I'm not going to do a video on each of them. I'm just going to kind of collect them together. And as I get to these projects, we will get into it. But the first thing that I'm really happy about, so y'all know I be reading. I love the novels. So she has, wait, pause one second. So she has uh, The Siege of Terra. I have it. She has it. She has it. Um, has she started reading it? Nope. <laughs> because, see, Chris, I have it. You know who I'm talking to. Uh, Butters, I have it. I have it. But I have not started reading it because I've been reading The Horus Heresy, good God, since I was a teenager. And I'm just simply not ready for that saga to... <laughs> Like it's a, like I keep reading other things, but I've had this for a year <laughs> and um, we're just going to reach back over here and put it back in, in the bookshelf. That's what we're going to do. There it goes. It's back in the bookshelf. Um, but what I'm, what I'm into right now, and I've had this book for a while too. I just have to find more time to read, but I've been reading Mink Galesk, which is all about the fall of Cadia and how it happened. Um, and my husband took me warhammering today just to cheer me up because life has been lifing. Um, and I appreciate that. That's what you do. You got a nerd in your life who is having some life. Take them nerding. It's good. We need escapism. I'm very much pro escapism because life is life, y'all. There's enough reality out there. We can, we can step out of reality once in a while. Yeah, I know the hair is different. It's great, isn't it? The girl who does my hair is magic. She's magic. She's great. Um, but... Uh, we, we specifically went to go look at books. Um, I, I love a book. Um, even though I don't have as much time to read as I used to, I love a book. I'm, and I am pro audiobook as well. Because if Nick Kime is reading, I'm gonna listen, because that man can read. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so I wanted to just, you know, go look and see if there were any books that I wanted. Um, it was his idea, gay husband. Um, but look what they have. Had Dark Imperium. You know what this is? This is the follow-up to Minkalesque, The Last White Shield. It's what happened after the fall of Cadia. Yeah, I know, right? And if you don't know what Cadia is, it is a human world that sits at the edge of the known galaxy between humans and the Eye of Terror. So Abaddon the Despoiler has his eyeballs on Cadia, and once in a while he comes out and attacks, but they always drive him back. Um, and the higher-ups of Cadia, which is a military world, everyone on that planet is raised to fight everybody. everybody. That's what they do, because they, they look at the Eye of Terror every day. Um, and eventually, Abaddon unleashes a massive attack and brings down the last bastion between humanity and the warp freely pouring out into the material world. Um, and then they're going to race back to Terra to be like, sound the alarm. Kind of like what they did in the Horus Heresy, you know. So, yes, she's skipping all over the Horus Heresy. She's reading Fabius Bile. She's rereading um, her, uh, her her Inquisition stuff. We're going back to December Heaven or We love some Eisenhorn. I refuse to acknowledge the end of 30K right now. Refuse. <laughs> um, but they are bringing back Primarchs in the new stuff, I think. Uh, when we talked to the guy at the Games Workshop store that there are five Primarchs who are back in 40K. And this is post-fall of Cadia. Guess who comes back? <laughs> this is why I picked up this novel. Because you got you got to read the summary to know what you want. But, and that, uh, Indomitus novel. Don't you love the language in Warhammer? It's so great. But fell times have come to the galaxy. Cadia has fallen. That's what got me to buy. It's like, oh, this is after the fall of Cadia. This is right after Minkalesque. So much lore. <laughs> Destroyed by an onslaught of chaos. A great rift in the warp has opened from the depths and spewed demons and horrors of old night. But all hope is not lost. A hero long absent has returned, and with him comes the wrath of the Ultramarines reborn. Robute Gilliman has arisen to lead the Imperium out of darkness on a crusade, the likes of which has not been seen since the fabled days of the Emperor. 
but never before have the forces of ruin amassed in such numbers, and nowhere is safe from desperation. From the dreaded scourge stars come the hordes of the plague father, Lord Nurgle. We don't like Nurgle in this house. And their pestilent eyes fixed on the crag. As the Indominus Crusade rages on, Gilliman races to Ultramar in a confrontation with the Death God. So yeah, we picked this up today. I'm gonna rush through Minkalex now just to get to this novel. Because she can't be bothered to finish the Siege of Terror. Where's my water? Yeah, I'll drink that uh, Crystal Light. That's what I've got in here. And it got this mango flavor that has caffeine in it. Delicious. <laughs> um, and full of caffeine. Like, I need caffeine. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a fun read. So I'm going to actually leave it out. It's not going to be in my little enclosed bookcase because I want to get to it. But guess what they did? This is cool. So, um, apparently, at, at least at ours, I don't know if it's every Games Workshop store, but the one here, on the first Saturday of the month, they'd be given a, uh, a little free figure out. So, they have some real figures to paint. I know. And, um, I was like, well, it's not, I don't think I play, I don't play fantasy. It's a fantasy figure, but it's like, I take it. And the guy was in there painting, he was like, use it to test stuff on. I was like, that is such a good idea. I can test out airbrushing techniques and stuff on these without doing it on a figure that means something to me. Because <laughs> um, you always need, it's good to go collect these, so if your Warhammer store does this, I would ob absolutely go get them. Because if you're learning how to airbrush, how to dry brush, use inks and all that kind of stuff, do it on figures that you aren't going to be mad if they're bad. <laughs> do it on something you don't mind it not being perfect on. Um, and then my husband, this is funny, had ordered um, himself a set of Space Marines that he thought were going to be something different. But what showed up were actually uh, 30K Marines. I know, right? So she's already got her Emperor's Children. She is building salamanders with the other half of the box. The only other army I would want to build are the Ultramarines of Ultramar. <laughs> you know, because I've, I've got my, my bears of word, and they be bearing some word. They are beautiful. I took so long to paint those, and when I do my Sisters of Silence kill team, um, it's going to take just as long to paint them, because we're going ham on our kill team. But... Yeah. He opened the box and he said, are these figures you can use? And I started looking at the sprue and the pieces, but what really let me know was the sprue. Yeah, you recognize these pieces, don't you? These are the, 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 the squad leader pieces. I have with me 20 space marines that he just he got them off of eBay and he thought they were something else and it's real hard to return stuff if you buy it off the bay. So, and there stands. So, these are destined to become ultramarines. Yeah. So, we're gonna, we're, we're doing some organizing in his office this afternoon and I'm gonna do some painting. Try to get some more projects done. We are very different painters. I think I mentioned that in the last um, Warhammer video. I start a project and finish a project. And I might have one or two other things out to paint. Once I get tired of painting one thing or looking at it, I will just, you know, switch to something else. He, on the other hand, has 19 things going at once. <laughs> so, we're we gonna do a little organizing today. I'm a very organized person, obviously. Um, one of the reasons I'm able to collect en masse is I am good at organizing these things. So, I can have it in my house and it not be overwhelming. But, you know, we balance each other out with strength. So, one of my strengths is organization. So, I'm, I'm gonna reorganize his office this afternoon. Um, and it's where I paint too, so I kinda need it organized. <laughs> so, there's that. I'm really happy about this. But then he started playing this new Warhammer game because that's what we needed a new a new game. A shadow looks like a mustache, don't it? Okay, I'm done. <laughs> but um, he started playing Blood Bowl, and if you don't know what Blood Bowl is, it's tabletop Warhammer football. It's real. It's adorable, and there's a there's a video game version of it as well um it's very cute and I was like oh okay and he played there was a a team called the snotlings 
I think they're dwarves or something. I don't know. Or are they, they little orcs or grots? I don't know. It's one of them. It sounds like something he'd love. I was like, well, that's cute. He's like, yeah, I want snotlings. But he needs someone to, to play the game with. Um, but I ha I'd never even heard of Blood Bowl. I, I mean, I don't. nobody knows everything. Is this genius or is it manipulation? <laughs> So he was he was clicking through and showing me different um, figures from the Blood Bowl. I was like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And then he shows me a very particular picture. You ready for this? He thinks he's funny because he got me. Look at this. That is a fox with a football in its mouth. And it is the cutest thing I have ever seen. And he showed me just that, and I went, oh, that is so cute. Can you get me a fox? Because I didn't realize it was for Blood Bowl at the time. He was like, oh, it's already on the way. Excuse me? How how can you have just shown me something and it's already been ordered? He had this whole plan and cooked up in his head that he was going to get me to play by showing me something super cute that I would want, which is a fox running around with a football in its mouth. And I'm going to start playing this game just because I want the fox with the football in its mouth. And then he showed me some really cool um, add-ons that you can have. So he got me the tree man. I looked at this one. I was like, oh, that was really cool. So I'll be painting a tree man to join my Blood Bowl team. So now I play Blood Bowl. <laughs> it's fun. You know, it, it's better to have a lot of things to do that you like doing together than be in a relationship where you struggle to find anything in common. Um, I know people who are in those kinds of relationships and are like them and their partner. It's like, why? Are, what made y'all like each other? Because if it's just looks, that's not good enough. Looks go away. Nobody gets to stay pretty forever. <laughs> um, I don't care how cute you were at 22. That's going away <laughs> eventually. Uh, there's got to be more than just that. And uh, it, it's kind of it, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Because I've, I've had friends and stuff who, you know, it doesn't seem like they have anything in common with their spouse. I'm like, so what? Why do y'all like each other? I mean, I'm not questioning it. I just inquiring minds want to know <laughs> um and you know especially when people voice it and they're like yeah um i do this they do that we sleep in the same bed sometimes that sounds miserable so i'd much rather be in the position of we have so much in common that we like to do and he's always surprising me there's one more thing i want to show you um i want i start i've got my adeptus sorori ta in a box and <laughs> The, they are a fall project along with the salamanders. Like, I've got my projects timed out. So, like, I know when I'll get stuff completed. But now I'm set to where I can play most of the games we play. I can play OPR. I can play one-page rules. I can play Kill Team. I can play 30K. I can play Aeronautica. I'm good. And I've got all those little little, little dwarves and gnomes that I painted. Um, I can play Fantasy OPR as well. So, all the games we play, I have an army for. And except for Blood Bowl now, but I have an army force. So I can finish everything else at my leisure. I feel no pressure to finish. Like I paint at, at, at my pleasure and having the armies I have now helps me learn the mechanics of the games. Uh, there are different specialties for every type of critter out there or legionary. Um, but I am learning how the rolling works and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's cool. But he showed me these little chibi sorority figures. I was like, oh, those are, those are cute. But I thought that they were ones that people had painted. And I was like, oh, well, if I had that, I'd paint it like this or I'd paint it like this. And it turned out they were ones that had come pre-painted. People primed them and then repainted them. And I was like, oh, well, that's a cool idea. <laughs> he got me a little, a little sister. So she's a little chibi sister. The paint job's not bad, but she is getting primed and repainted. Um, and she's going to be in the colors that I choose. So there are several colors you can paint your sororitas, um, your little sisters and the Sisters of Silence. Um, I'm probably going towards the royal blues with them. Kind of matchy-matchy a little bit with my ultramarines. That's how she feels. Uh, more grays and blues. Black is a big color for them. You can't leave the black out. Um, but they, you got a little bit more color freedom with them than you do some. 
But when you're painting, just exercise your creativity. It's still your army. If you don't, it's up to you to like the way it looks at the end of the day. If you're happy with it, you did a good job. Um, and then find cool people to play with. I said that in the last video. Like the folks that we game with, they're, they're cool. Nobody's like judging it and going, well, why did you pick that color scheme? Because I wanted to. <laughs> like I remember somebody commenting when I was in the process of painting my emperor's children. I base coated them in fulcrum pink. That was on purpose because when I put the other colors on top, I really wanted that to be kind of the outline color. But the only way to do that is to fully base coat them or do what I did with those um, word bearers and spend six months making lines. I didn't have time for that <laughs> when I was painting those. So, but fulgrim pink is a canonical color. Games Workshop makes it. Well, Citadel Paints makes it. It exists. And when people are enjoying their process, let them enjoy their process. We all want to give each other tips and tricks and stuff on how to do things, but there's nothing like learning. It's kind of like with, with teenagers. We want to tell them everything that they don't need to do so they do, don't make the mistakes we did. The only way we learn is by our mistakes. You know, look up the YouTube videos, talk to people who paint, you know, but there is no, your paint scheme is wrong. Or there is no, well, you're just painting it the wrong way. You'll never hear that from me. I'm learning. You're learning. Let's learn and enjoy it together. And she's going to be fun to practice on um, because I'm going to try some airbrushing techniques and stuff on her. I, I have four airbrushes. Somebody commented, you should airbrush. Really? Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but I do have four. I, I have four airbrushes. My husband has like three or four as well. I have a portable airbrush for when we go out. And then also if I don't feel like fiddling with the fancy one. I have a Grex airbrush. That's really, really nice. That is a very good airbrush. Um, no, I'm sorry. I have three airbrushes. And then I have another one. That I can't remember the, the, the name of it. But it, it's only used for priming. We don't do fine work with it. It's literally just for priming. Because we, we beat that one to hell. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of stuff out and we're trying to prime. Yeah, that one just gets used and abused. What can I say? Um, but in, enjoy the process. And, you know, I, I don't know why I always feel like offering nerdy encouragement on the stuff I do. But, you know, it, there, there's a lot out here to enjoy. Find your niche. Be a well-rounded nerd. Enjoy the escapism of it all. Because life is heavy. We all need somewhere to put our brains <laughs> once in a while other than down in the doldrums of life. But I'm so looking forward to it. This is a nice just little Warhammer haul. Is that what I'll call the video? The Warhammer haul. Is it a haul? None of it was bought at the same time. It was bought over the course of a month. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to just organizing today and, and getting set up to do other little projects and, and whatnot. So yeah. I think now we are going to have our lunch and then I'm going to go organize this office and I'm going to paint for the rest of the evening. Sounds like a great way to spend the evening. So as always, please like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.